welcome back. We are back with a part two, a part dose of uh, my favorite reasons for living in Las Vegas or favorite things about living in Las Vegas. If you uh, happen to find yourself here and haven't watched the first part of this video yet, then be sure to go ahead and do that. Not gonna spend too much longer in the intro, but while we're here, if you're looking to move to Las Vegas or if you just recently moved here, then um, subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna be working on a lot more Vegas related things. Also, just wanna say thank you to everyone who watched the first part of this video and those who left a lot of comments and feedback. I really, really appreciate it and I encourage the continued comments and conversation. I'm glad to hear that the last video really helped quite a few people out and was pleasantly surprised to even see some locals chime in with their thoughts and opinions because I mean, one person's thought is great, but I, yeah, so in the last video, the things that we touched on was the convenience of living in Las Vegas. Talked a little bit about the cost of living in Las Vegas and the rent here in Vegas. Talked about the casino lifestyle, some of the job opportunities, the food options, the whole driving situation, population, all that jazz. So in this video right now, I am filming in July, the start of July, right in the middle of summertime. So let's go ahead and talk about our summers, our climate, our weather. So from a lot of what I hear, one major concern for a lot of people that are thinking about moving to Las Vegas is definitely our summer times. It's no secret, we are basically living in Satan's armpit. I will say anytime anyone is like, oh, I wanna visit Vegas, I wanna come to Vegas sometime, the first thing I always say is, yeah, you totally should, but just don't come in the summer. Just don't do it. It's not a fun time. We are notorious out here for having scalding, dry heat. Temperatures on average are definitely in the 100 range. 100 degrees even is a nice day to us. Not even exaggerating that a little bit. But all right, Vegas peeps, what is the number one you know you're from Vegas when saying? but it's a dry heat. You're not truly a Las Vegas local until you've told someone from out of town, but it's a dry heat. But where's the lie? But oh my God, how do you guys deal with it? We don't, we just stay in air conditioning and try to avoid going outside during the day at all costs. So um, that's our version of dealing with it. The difference with our desert heat compared to a lot of places that get hot in the summertime is definitely the lack of humidity. And because of that, um, the the heat sensation that you will feel is a literal burning searing of your skin, which is also why I would highly recommend not having leather seats when you're out here. That's probably one of the worst things that you could do while living out here, classic noob mistake, or at least get some seat covers or something because you'll thank me later when you're not ripping layers of skin off after getting up from your driver's seat. Just saying. When the wind blows, we don't even call it a breeze. We can't because it's not a breeze. What it is, is it's even worse than having no wind because it... Oh, hi, Ellie. Ellie, shh. Oh, okay. I guess she's hanging out right there. But yeah, you'll notice when you feel a gust of wind out here, it feels like a literal blow dryer or when you open the oven and the hot air comes out, not even an exaggeration. That is pretty much what a what wind in the summer here feels what, like hot desert winds. Gotta be enough. So yeah, uh, I understand that we're not starting off on the most positive note here, but there is a trade-off to that. Cause you know, no place really has the perfect climate. Otherwise, I'm pretty sure we would all be living there. Maybe save like the more tropical places like Hawaii. But yeah, if y'all know a perfect place out there with perfect weather, really great cost of living, and is just a good environment to be in, then uh, let me know because I will pack my bags. But yeah, the positive in all of this is for people that don't enjoy the cold, Vegas has a very mild winter. You just have to pay the price of a few months of summer heat, and then we actually, in my opinion, have the most perfect transitional seasons. Like our falls and our springs are amazing. They hang in the 70s and they're not even humid. Also in the winter time, if you are kind of like a winter activities person, although we don't generally get snow, so for like the last few years, we've had some weird like patterns of snow, but snow isn't generally part of our 
regular winter climate. However, if you want to get away and go skiing or go snowboarding or whatever, just about 45 minutes outside of town is this really nifty place called Mount Charleston. Our surrounding mountains are always snow capped every year and then Mount Charleston always gets snow. So in the winter time, there's uh, ski lodges, there's skiing, there's snowboarding. You can go up there and just take the family, play in the snow, go sledding, whatever. That's our little winter escape that's kind of just in our backyard. Definitely not too hard to get to. Speaking of surrounding areas, I think that's my personal favorite part of living in Vegas other than everything being open 24 hours. I really, really enjoy our geographic location on the map because when you find that you are just itching to get out of town, there are a good amount of weekend road trips that you can take. We also have a pretty decent hiking scene, which I feel like just needs to be a different video. Um, so I'll definitely go over that, make sure you're subscribed. But I love the outdoors, I love hiking. We can talk about all of the outdoorsy stuff in another talk. But back to surrounding areas, a popular favorite road trip here in Vegas is definitely to Southern California. LA is only about a five hour drive on average, which I've done in a weekend plenty of times. If you just wanna get away, go to the beach, maybe escape, escape some of the summer heat and get some nicer temperature, LA is an option. San Diego is only about five hours away. Also not too bad of a drive. If you are a Disney nerd or a Disney freak, then the good news is Disneyland is really close to here. Disneyland is located in Anaheim, California, but since you hit Anaheim before you hit LA, you can make that drive honestly in like three and a half to four hours, depending on traffic and how fast you drive, but I am not encouraging anyone to break the law. I actually used to have an annual pass to Disneyland as a Las Vegas resident and I would just make trips over the weekend and sometimes even just do a day trip and then come back because especially if you have somebody to switch off with, it's a really, really easy drive where you don't have to deal with any like LA traffic since you get there before you get to LA. So definitely a plus in my book. If you don't mind even a little bit more of a drive, then the Bay Area is also accessible from here. I mean, first of all, if you don't want to drive, it's really easy to get to California. But flying, um, there's pretty much always flights going to and from there because we have an international airport, which is another really great thing about living here. But uh, San Francisco, I'd say, is about seven to eight hours of driving. Somewhere that I went last winter that I really loved that I did in one weekend was Sequoia National Park. That was about six hours, I'd say. That's a beautiful trip. I would highly recommend that. You can get like a cabin up there and everything. Um, Utah, Utah is a really great next door neighbor for us. You can definitely count on cooler temperatures anytime in Utah. Cedar City, Utah is only about a two hour drive from here. You could do that in your sleep. I don't recommend sleeping and driving, please no. My favorite reason going out there is uh, as a theater geek, going out to the Shakespeare Festival. Every year, Southern Utah University hosts this amazing Shakespeare Festival where they actually host professional productions of, you guessed it, Shakespeare plays. They have an outdoor theater on that campus that is modeled after the Globe Theater where a lot of Shakespeare's plays were originally performed. So it's like almost an exact replica, really cool experience. But then other than that, they don't just have Shakespeare plays, they usually also have at least one musical and then just like another regular play, like non-Shakespeare play and a few other productions. But then it's really cool because in the whole atmosphere is just like all uh, Shakespearean up. So that's, that's a really fun little getaway for all you show nerds. Also kind of like California, if you're willing to go just a little bit further, further than that, then Salt Lake City, Utah is about like a seven to eight hour drive, which is like the northern part of Utah. I still haven't made that trek, but I do have friends that live up there that go back and forth kind of regularly since they have family out here. So yeah. Ooh, ooh, big one. Arizona, also a neighboring state. The biggest point of interest that we have close to us is the Grand Canyon. Ah! Well, you know, just one of the seven natural wonders of the world casually like in our backyard, next door neighbor, whatever. But I will say um, the Grand Canyon, you'll definitely have to do your research and planning on before going out there because uh, we are about two hours away by driving from the West Rim. If you're not familiar, the Grand Canyon is just really 
big if you haven't guessed and is separated out into different rims. The West Rim is really close to the Nevada Arizona border. That area is Wallapai Indian Territory so uh, it's not part of Grand Canyon National Park. Grand Canyon National Park is the South Rim which if you were to drive from the West Rim to the South Rim would take about five, four to five hours. So yeah, that's just a lot. Yeah, just <laughs> know your Grand Canyon rims. Of course you have Phoenix, Arizona. That's about a five hour drive. I haven't gone just cause I personally kind of avoid visiting places that can reach hotter temperatures than Vegas, which apparently is Phoenix. Another really cool pro about living in Vegas is the amount of conventions and expos that we get. Honestly, we get so many conventions and expos like every week, probably every day, that I can guarantee that like 95% of locals here don't even know what's going on or what convention is in town because it's just like there's always a convention in town. It's kind of weird when there's not. The, the, the biggest, most well-known ones would have to be like CES, the, consu the Consumer Electronic. What does the S stand for? Show, duh, the Consumer Electronic Show. And then there's um, the Magic Convention, which is one of the biggest like fashion conventions. We just have a lot of venues and space to house it. You know, we have so many hotels and casinos, both on the strip and off the strip to just host it all. I dare you to look up a Las Vegas convention calendar or expo calendar and uh, have fun with that because you will see just the most like random and niche things that have a whole convention and market for it. So that's always interesting and a really big plus for that. Now this is, this is kind of a secret. So I'm kind of just like spilling the beans on something that's really lesser known. So don't come at me. With all the conventions that come into town, that makes for a really good opportunity to just pick up some like extra cash or side work because a lot of the times the booths that will be at these conventions, look for people to work the booths. It makes some pretty decent money. It is not bad. I would say usually they would need you for like three days or so, and then um, you work like eight hour days and get paid somewhere between like, on average like 16 to 25, $30 an hour. I've done it and made some really decent checks for just like a few days. So just a cool little side hustle tip there. Going a little bit more into the whole kind of just like job landscape or career landscape out here. We also have quite a few headquarters out here and a lot of big projects and businesses just always being built. Um, so there's just always room for new jobs. More recent 2019 update, I mean technically this is in Henderson, but they actually just broke ground on a new Google data center. That's somewhere around like a $600 million project that's supposed to create somewhere around 50,000 jobs. Not to mention we also have the Raider Stadium, which is still in the process of being built. Uh -huh. Good next point. Oh my God. It's kind of a crazy time to live in Las Vegas right now because for those who have been here for a few years, we've all just been seeing kind of just like this sudden boom in becoming a quote unquote real city. Because what do all major cities on the map have? Sports teams. And I think that was like the major component that we are missing. The acquisition of professional sports teams in our city is definitely contributing to Las Vegas being a developing major city. Ah, ah, so crazy, so weird to think of Las Vegas in sports, but our biggest one is the Las Vegas Raiders, formerly known as the Oakland Raiders. You know, we still have, we have the Raiders Stadium out there being built uh, south of the Las Vegas Strip. Another recent sports team is the WNBA's Las Vegas Aces. We also just got the Las Vegas Aviators, which is our minor league baseball team. And then the really big one, the one that really kind of just put us on the map, the Vegas Golden Knights. I still haven't gone to a Golden Knights game, but I've heard it's the most amazing thing. But yeah, having an NHL team in Vegas was just crazy for so many reasons. I think I could speak for pretty much all the locals that have been living here for a while when I say there has not been anything like the Golden Knights coming to our city. We have never had as much sports spirit the way that we have in the last year with the Golden Knights. Golden Knights merch and decor everywhere, all over the strip, just everywhere you went. You saw people all decked out in Golden Knights gear during hockey season, which was really strange and just fascinating to see. But definitely a cool thing that has really brought the Vegas community together like never before. There's also just a lot to do here besides 
drinking and gambling. I think one of my favorite things to recommend uh, whenever people come out here or just like kind of want somewhere to explore that's not the Las Vegas Strip is downtown Las Vegas. Again, I'm reserve downtown Las Vegas talk. For another thing, so make sure you stay tuned. But kind of like going back to the food thing, in the part one of this video, I mentioned like all the famous food chains from everywhere being here. But another thing is we also have some insane fine dining, if that's your thing. If you're a major foodie, oh my God, you're gonna love it here. We have some of the world's top chefs and restaurants all in one place. Just a quick little, like a little known tidbit. It's not fine dining, but one of my favorite, like really good places on the strip is Gordon Ramsay's freaking fish and chips. Yeah. The man does not play around with his fish and chips. I'm not even a big fish and chips person, but I have really gone out of my way just to get those fish and chips. Shout out Mr. Ramsey for really doing us right there. Another one of my absolute favorite things about being here in Vegas is the entertainment. I mean, of course. We're also known as like an entertainment capital of the world. There are so many shows and residencies here going on here all the time. You really just end up taking it for granted. And probably after you've lived here for a certain amount of time, just can't even keep up. I really regret not seeing JLo, but I keep thinking that she'll probably come back because she's, I missed her like twice already, but for some reason I keep thinking that oh, she'll probably go again. I'm not, I'm not gonna sit here and name everyone, but just know that everyone comes here. <laughs> um, aside from those big names, there's also a lot of just really fun shows that I still haven't seen. And then once you kind of settle in here and get to know people and just network a little bit more, then you may find that you end up just like getting the hookup to some of these places just because you like meet people that like work for that company or that venue or whatever. So, so yeah, there's a, there is a little bit of something for everyone here, whether it's, you know, comedy or musicals or concerts or whatever. You'll always have something to do, something to take people to when they come in from out of town. And then the last couple things that are really unique about living here in Las Vegas are if you are 420 friendly or a fan of cannabis, then fortunately for you, it is legal in the state of Nevada. There are dispensaries everywhere. But for those that are from somewhere where it's not legal and you're kind of worried about that, um, don't be. In my opinion, at least, it hasn't really changed the Las Vegas environment versus when it wasn't legal. I'm pretty sure that there's something that says that you still have to like enjoy it on your private property. But it's it's not like all of a sudden they're just like people getting faded outside like every restaurant and sidewalk or public space or whatever. So yeah, that's my spiel on like my favorite, on my favorite parts about living in Las Vegas. I wanted to keep it on like the positives of Vegas. It's definitely not perfect. There are absolute cons, which I would also be happy to talk about. So if you wanna hear more about a specific topic or, or have something that you're curious about, then just, you know, standard YouTube stuff. Go ahead and leave your thoughts in the comments and we will get to them. But for now, I bid thee farewell. Thanks again for checking out this video. Make sure to stay tuned for more Vegas related things. I know someone said that they wanted to see some more Vegas vlogs. We're definitely gonna get in on that action. So hope you stay tuned and let me know if you have any other questions. Thanks for tuning into this one and we will talk again later. Say bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. <laughs> It's okay, Poppy. It's okay. Oh, sorry. Ellie wants to say hi. Um, are you here? Can you say hi? Yeah. <laughs> hi. Okay, sorry. Pause. This is my puppy, Eloise. Ah! I actually adopted Ellie from a local shelter, a local shelter here in Vegas called the Animal Foundation. Really great folks. Um, I actually have a vlog of, of adopting Ellie from like maybe four years ago. I've had her for about four years now. Uh, so if you want to watch that, here's the update. She's nice and chunky, nice and healthy. Nice and healthy compared to when I first got her. She was a skinny little thing. But uh, yeah, if you want to watch that, I'll leave the link somewhere in here for you to find. <laughs> but anyway, she's so over it. Okay, run along now.